What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 390 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. We're li- <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? I completely fell apart, but you're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering or if you also are falling apart. That's right. We're here for you no matter what's going on. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. And I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And you know what? Good job, everybody. Good job for coming yeah, here this week, turning on whatever device you used to listen to this, including your cat, petting its ears mm-hmm. so that it gets a proper signal. You made it to the show this week, and that's awesome. Exactly. Do you know what? No matter what you're doing today, we are proud of you for doing or not doing it. Yes, we are. If I could send you a little, you know, like British people, they open those crackers at Christmas and like a crown comes out. Okay. Like you say, you know, but I've heard of those. I've in theory seen pictures. I still do not conceptually understand how they work. (laughs) Okay. This is what I think. Sure. I think it's a little popper like thing and you pop it like you pull on the ends and it pops and Uh out comes a crown. Okay. I but think. how is the crown in there? I don't know. It's like some kind okay. of weird British magic. <laughs> I mean, I think so. The point is, I would send yeah. you one of those crowns because that's how proud of you I am right now. Yes, same. And um, on today's episode of Good Luck High Five, there was recently some ban and restricted announcements that came out actually this morning when we we're recording this. And so yeah. we wanted to take like a week to kind of see what happens to the various formats before we talk about them, because our plan is to do a deep dive on historic next week after these banned and restricted announcements and then tell you all the awesome decks that you can play in historic before the big historic arena open that weekend. That's right. Uh, so it's. Tune in next week for sure if you want to hear what the what is in Historic. Yes. Because it is one of my favorite formats. Um, I hope that these announcements do not change that. I'm a little worried. We can touch on that in a bit, but yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, there, there is some big shakeups. Well, well, we're going to talk about it a little bit because it is one of the questions, but the point is this week is going to be a mailbag episode, which are That's right. some of our favorites to record. So we asked you out there in listener land for a bunch of questions and we got them. One of which was to talk about the BNR. So we will talk about that, but I heard, yeah. I heard about, a, I heard you say a bunch of questions, <laughs> like a bunch cake, <laughs> you know what, like a bunch of questions with how many things on the internet are turning out to actually be cake i would not be surprised if these questions were actually just cakes one of my favorite things about that is that like i saw efro tweeted today i think that was like i don't know where all of this cake conversation came from but i'm enjoying it and i was like efro it's literally athena who's the person who introduced me to the fact that this cake thing was happening so the answer is inside your own home (laughs) Yeah, I I don't know about everybody else, but I'm loving the cakes. I'm loving the oh, cake. They're fakes. great. Everything can be a cake, okay? Ooh, I don't can we know. call it a cake out when you don't think something's a cake, but then it's a cake instead of a fake out? <laughs> yeah, you got a cake out. Or yes, I mean that makes that makes sense because you know fake out cake out. But yeah. I want it to be like, hear me out. It's being called cake rolled. Like Rick rolled, <laughs> but cake rolled. And also because there's like Swiss rolls, which are cake rolls. Oh, now I'm just really want some cake. I also really want some cake. Oh, Megan, do you ever think about that cake? This is magic related, everybody. That we had after a magic tournament. Where were we? Number one is my first question. But it was a yellow cake with chocolate frosting. And we got it and it was a southern like home we cooking were in restaurant. Richmond, in and Richmond? it was at the iconic like Richmond Southern food place. And it was amazing. Yes. Obviously, I think about that cake. I think about that cake at least once a month. And in fact, I thought about it like two days ago. It was a classic like butter yellow cake with like chocolate fudge icing. And it was so good. It was literally the best cake I ever had in my entire life. Anyways, anyone who's ever been in Richmond will know which place we're talking about. It's like that place. The place where everybody goes. It's so good. You know, like I can't remember the name of it, but like you need to go to that place. (laughs) Yes. Also, hot tip that Rashad gave me. If you're in Richmond, weird, weird that this episode is going in the direction of Richmond, Richmond food recommendations. <laughs> okay, right. But there's like Secret Sandwich Society, which is like the sandwich place that everybody talks about. Yeah. But the place across the street that's like in like an old bookstore looking building on the outside 
is Better Sandwiches. And Whoa. I don't remember the name of it, but it is way better sandwiches than the other place. I miss, you know, I miss going out for food with magic yes. people. <laughs> like that sandwich was so good that I still think about it. Oh. oh. And I, mean, I wanted like, to go there again, but they were closed the day that I wanted to go there. Maybe Sunday. Maybe they were like closed on Sunday or something. Anyways. I think somebody asked us a question about this, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But okay. I will okay. when we'll we get leave to it. the question. Save it, for the, save it for the podcast. Save it for the episode. We're on the podcast. We save are. Save it for the episode. <laughs> we are. Okay. <laughs> but before we get going, we have one big thing to do, which is... Thank everyone who is a patron of this show. Thank you so much uh, to the people who have who have become patrons in the last few weeks, like especially in such a trying time out there. Yeah. Thank you to the people who have increased their pledges. Thank you even to the people who have decreased their pledges but remained patrons. Yes. Like we get it. Sometimes it is tough and like it means the world to us that you're like, hey, I need to adjust my budget, but I'm still supporting this podcast. Yeah, it's it is wonderful. We love everybody at every single level, no matter how much you can give. It doesn't matter to us as long as like you're here and saying, oh, here's a dollar. Here's a dollar a month. I can do that. That is in incredible thank you so much yes. like megan said it uh means everything to us especially now we're like sitting here we're like we need to find you know potentially a new office space because of everything that happened <sighs> to our other office and so like yeah. you know we're we're in, and in case search. you missed what happened to our other office um the building was set on fire and then our <laughs> office flooded when people put the fire out Turns out, in case you were like, I wonder what they're talking about. <laughs> Did, yep. Was there a leak? <laughs> well, that's well, one way to put it. <laughs> a leak from a bunch of fire hoses. <laughs> all fire you can hoses do is leaked laugh. all over the building. Oh my gosh. Oh. <sighs> but yes, anyways, we are in that process. So thank you, everybody. Your your helps your support helps us get to that place where we can find somewhere new and start. Making content the way that we want to instead of like over the magic of yes. the interwebs. <laughs> exactly. And of course, a big thank you to Card Kingdom for always having our back and supporting us. You can buy anything you need for your magical life over at cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. Uh, they're a fabulous company. Uh, they've continued to support us, like Megan said, through these trying times. They have super fast shipping, excellent customer service, and their website is great to use too. It's really user friendly and they've got like blogs and cool videos from their other people that they support as content creators. So you've really got to check them out. P.S. I don't really know if you can go there yet, but Mox Boarding House just opened in Portland. Ah, so great. Yeah. You can definitely, like, I bet you check if they're doing, like, curbside pickup at least. Yeah, you've got to Google them if you live in Portland. Yes. I mean, Mox Boarding House is the place to go in the Seattle oh. area, either of them. Um, and now yeah. they have one in Portland, and I'm like, hello, when are you coming here? <laughs> They're so they're such cool stores. It's like the ultimate yes. board game stores. Yeah, they really they're really so great. So congratulations, um, and just wonderful to them. people. Wonderful people. Huge congrats on opening their third store. Uh, what a huge accomplishment! And you've got to go check yeah. them out if uh, possible whenever whenever you're able to because that's super cool. All right, everybody, it's time to dip into the mailbag and answer some listener questions. That's right. Uh, we're going to start with one of my favorites from Twitter. Uh, this comes from uh, <laughs> Amateur Pro Emeritus, Greg. Oh, Greg. Um, he asks, Rin and Sari from M21 are inseparable. Of the following other iconic magic duos, which are the most <gasps> inseparable? Great question. Um, Gisa and Garolf. Gisa? I don't know, know that I've ever said her name out know. loud. <laughs> Anyways, Ren and Six, Will and Rowan, Pierre and Toothy, Nicol, Bolas and Eugene, <laughs> Megan and Drawing Cards. <laughs> well, you know what? Up until recently, I would have said Megan and Drawing Cards, but then you started playing Gruel and Historic, and I don't even know who oh. you are anymore. Maria, if you don't think I'm Drawing Cards, <laughs> you I can't believe that you would mistrust me that way. <laughs> Okay, how are you drawing cards in Gruel? You robber of the rich somebody? Oh, uh, okay. it is so satisfying. That's true. Or um, I also played, what's the little, what's the little uh, satyr friend? The little the party satyr. 
there's a the, oh the party satyr what does it do it draws iconic um iconic what's her face galia oh okay. galia yes you attack with three things you discard a card and you draw two. Oh, it's so great <laughs> you said attack in that sentence Attack I said with what? three things. Okay, I know. But more importantly, Maria, sometimes I will attack with three things when it's a bad idea just so I can draw two cards. Yeah, I mean, that that's pretty sweet. I, wow, I didn't know Galio was in the deck. That's awesome. I love Galia. I love Galia. I picked a version that has Galia in it. So good. To answer um, your question, Greg, the answer is obviously Ren and Six. They are literally the same creature. I was about to say the same <laughs> thing. I was like, I think Ren and Six are literally inseparable. <laughs> They're like fused together, They're like right? They're fused together. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Nicole Bolas and Eugene are obviously emotionally inseparable. <laughs> um, they are for, uh, for eternity dragon nemeses. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, locked in so an that's epic like, battle. Yeah, exactly. Pure and Toothy are very cute. They are super um, cute. Um, yeah, but I think yeah, Ren and Six. Ren and Six. <laughs> Ren and Six gets it for being literally in something. <laughs> Great question, though. Great question. Uh, Great this question. question comes from our Discord for our patrons uh, from Aston. Which card would you most like to cut into and discover it's actually cake? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aston. <laughs> Great for question. Asking the really important question. Yeah. Ooh. Great. Oh, Ooh, I wow. think I know. I well, this is just because I love robots, but I would love to mm -hmm. cut into a carn cake. <laughs> oh, a carn cake would be great. Wouldn't like, that cut be into excellent? A carn and it's actually a cake. Yeah. Do you know what? Mine is going to be similar, but I'm going to say skittering surveyor <laughs> because, like, what perfect value, right? Or like sky scanner. Like it, it draws you a card, or it gets you a land, and it's and a it's cake. cake? Great, great magic card. And it's cake? <laughs> this wow. actually leads me to this other question that somebody asked on Discord. We know what the cutest card of each set is, but what was the cutest card of 2019? Um, was it Skittering Surveyor or was that 2018? Oh, uh, when? Time means nothing. Skittering I feel Surveyor. Like Skits was the year before. Yeah, was the cutest yeah, card of 2018 was. because that's when Dominaria came out. But yeah. we do name a cutest card of the year each year in our Primbies episode. So, yes. Off the top of my head, I can't remember what it was, but if you listen to our Crimbies from last year, it will say Which wait, is what the year is it? Card it's of the whole year. Yeah. We will say <laughs> we will say which one it is. I just don't remember right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let me actually go. You tell, say the next question. I'm going to go look in our Google Doc because maybe we saved it. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, Ant asks, I know you don't like to be too negative, but given how ridiculous the past two years have been, starting from Nexus of Face, Fate M19 to now, which of the cards banned out of standard has been the worst to play against? And which do you wish had never been banned? Um, well, I'm going to go with for me. Oh, that's a really good question. Oko is, I, I think it's gotta uh, yeah. be Oko for me that was banned. Like, that card sucked so hard. Oko, I think, was the biggest, most glaring mistake that I can possibly oh. imagine. And people could cast it on turn two with the goose. Yep, with the goose. Um, and even and its loyalty got so high. So huge. And it could completely transform anything that you cared about oh. into food, which is normally I would love that idea. But uh. yeah, it was just like, it was miserable speaking of things being cake mysteriously hello oko um yeah. a meme ahead of its time in fact yeah <laughs> but yeah surprise it's cake it's cake um i mean i hate I nexus like ne obviously so like i feel like yeah which do you wish had never been banned for me the answer is probably nexus you liked it though right i loved nexus yeah i love nexus i wish it had never been banned i would have kept playing nexus Gosh, I personally, yeah, I, they're not asking what, what should have never been banned. I don't know. I yeah. think I agree with these bands <laughs> so far. And by the way, I did find cutest card of 2019. Ooh, which was it? Oh, we had Eye Kite. If you remember that cute little. <gasps> yes, that little Drake. Drake. Yeah. And Charm yep. Stray was also in there. So they, they probably both won. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Very cute. Very, two very cute cards. Very cute cards. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think those that that would be our answers because <laughs> those are kind of some abominations that get printed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a um, related question, 
from yeah, the Discord. Let's hear it. What do you think of the design philosophy of printing printing broken cards and banning them after they've dominated the metagame? Now, I don't think this is Watsi's idea they don't want a banned card <laughs> when they, yeah, when they make not. it <laughs> maybe it seems like that um and i do know that they ha- are i think that they were they're um talking about the de- design philosophy of pushing into more powerful territory and being yeah. like well if we have to ban it then we do but that's never ever their goal to get something banned like what a horrible thing it was for them that they had to ban oko right that was their flagship yeah. card of throne of eldraine um that being said, I, th- gosh, this is tough. Would I you- feel like we've come out like, ah, it's so hard because I want them to feel like they're able to push the envelope. Me too. Like at the end of the day, if you, if it was, if it was between one and the other, between like, oh, they're going to restrict themselves even conceptually as they're making things, or they're going to have to ban cards like more frequently. I think I'm going to land on the side of ban cards more frequently. Yeah. I think that I being said, too. I do feel like <laughs> I do feel like there's like some space for them to perhaps improve at learning how much the envelope should be pushed. <laughs> yeah. At their envelope pushing skills. <laughs> exactly. Need to, ma- to need to be fine tuned because I don't think that the number of bands that we've had is necessarily healthy. Yeah, I think we talk about this. We talked about this and I think in last year's Crimbies too, where we're like, what are we, what's the biggest decision we're happy about? Or maybe yeah. this was 2018, but it was like, we're super happy about how many people they're adding to the team, um, yeah. the playtest team and all these kinds of things. And in my opinion, the best money Wizards could spend is adding to these teams with mm-hmm. really smart, uh, you know, awesome range of people. And that will help hopefully, you know, stop the need to ban stuff. Like they can catch it earlier in development. Um, yeah. but yeah, we might be actually in the minority in this opinion. Cause I do think some people would prefer it to be a lower powered, uh, game overall, at least for standard. Yeah. And yeah, I think I'm, I just, I'm always going to err on the side of, of creativity and doing new and different things. Um, yeah, that's yeah. I think personally. for me, it's not, yeah. Like you said, it's not about always wanting them to be pushing power level, but I do always want them to be pushing creativity for yes, sure. Yes, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah, um, which leads us to uh, another related question. May asks, thoughts on this week's bans? Ah, okay. So um, we'll just give you a quick update here. In case you didn't listen to the upkeep this week, which, uh, come on, oh, I didn't, Joe. But <laughs> historic, we've got Agent of Treachery, Winota, Fires, all moved from suspended to banned. Burning mm-hmm. Tree Emissary suspended, Nexus of Fate mm-hmm. banned. Um, yeah. And as soon as I read those, I said to you, I'm worried about the ramp deck now. The Field of the Dead, like yes. Uro, I think that that's going to be a problem. Yeah, I have um, actually haven't been playing Historic recently for very long, but I started the other day based on Alias V's tweet, where she tweeted out a really cool Vampire's Best of One list, and it has been a blast. It's really, really cool, and it's actually different enough from the Vampire Standard list that I used to play that I loved, which is played in Best of Three Historic. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, when I played in best of three, I tried vamps in there too. I ran up against that field of the deck, dead deck so many times. And it reminded me of playing against that deck in standard. These two decks were in standard at the same time. And I was yep. like, am I having flashbacks here to my nightmares? Yeah. Like, I think that it is. I don't know. I don't know why they would have like put a cap with, um, with suspending, uh, burning tree emissary. Yeah. Without thinking about this ramp deck, which is like one of the most popular and powerful decks in historic right now. And I mean, and it wasn't standard too, right? Like we had problems and we had to deal with it in standard. Yeah. And I feel like we're like goals and field of the dead were suspended at some point and then removed from the suspended list for historic. Oh, were they really? I feel like they were, but I don't remember. They definitely, I feel like they were. I could be wrong, but I think they were. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, what we're saying is we're worried about it. Hopefully, well, anyways, what we're saying is we're worried, yes. We don't have to be, but I personally am worried yeah. about it. I faced it a lot last week, and it yeah. is, you know, it's a really annoying tech yeah. to play and against. And I really, like, uh, I'm just worried because I've really enjoyed Historic. Yes. Um, I have a great time playing it. Um, and I, I guess I don't know. <sighs> yeah. I guess I don't, I don't know. I'm interested to see what happens next. So. Okay. 
Good. Um, yeah, I we're going to talk about this next week. Like we said, um, there are so many awesome decks in Historic. Please let the format stay healthy. That's my yeah. thought on it. The rest of the yeah. bands, I you know, Pioneer, Oath of Nyssa got unbanned. I don't really have a thought about that. In Modern, Arkham's Astrolabe got banned, which I'm sad about because I think that card is really cool, but it enables some broken, broken stuff. And in Popper, Expedition mm-hmm. Map and Mystic Sanctuary got banned. I don't really p- play Popper, so I don't have an opinion on that. Um, yeah. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, Starfish asks, what's your favorite cheese? <laughs> Ooh. Well, Megan like a, thinks. I love I, so much cheese. You know, very, you know what your favorite cheese is. Absolutely. I know your favorite cheese. Absolutely. It's the sharpest cheddar you can get me. That's my favorite cheese. Yeah. Ten year, great. Oh, a plus. man. I, that's, it's really tough because I love, um, I love like mozzarella because of all of the things that you can do with it, uh, right? Like I yeah. love like, like mozzarella with like, you know, tomato and basil and stuff like that. And I, great. I love it on pizza. Like I love the places that it's not just like cheese sprinkled on top, but like, you know, fancier pizza, fancier quote unquote pizza places, but where it's like, you can get ones that have like the big circles of mozzarella on it. Oh yeah, for sure. I really love that. But if I was just going to eat slices of cheese, I think I would also go, I'd probably go for like a smoked cheddar. I really love like smokier cheeses. Great. If I'm just eating those. My second place is feta, for sure. Um, yes. I often ask for it on fries at a Greek restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> which if you've ever tried to think about it, it's great. That sounds, it sounds really good. It is excellent. Um, but yeah, those, those, those are my top two. But I'm always buying yeah. at least five years old cheddar. I mean, not at least five, <laughs> at least two to three. I won't go any younger than that. I mean, like, <laughs> come on, cheese. You've got to be a, a little worldly no. for me to consider you. No younger than two to three year old cheddar. I just want my cheddar to have some experience out there, everybody. I understand. Okay, it needs to have you. experienced the world a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Dan asks, what happened to Jean Ann? <laughs> wow. Okay. So this is a reference to my character I made in quarantine called Jean Ann, who likes to cook. She's single and she's cooking for one. So her cooking series is called Cooking for Fun because it's just cooking for one. Um, What happened is that I think what happened to a lot of people this pandemic, which is at the beginning of it, at least for me, (laughs) I was like, hey, losing losing your mind. Um, I'm, I'm losing it. No, I think it was more like I had the energy, right? To be creative and use new things we were finding in pandemic, like Zoom shows and doing stuff that was a stupid Instagram character and Mm -hmm. whatever. And now (laughs) I just am tired. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Right? It's We're all just tired. Somebody posted a graphic of it the other day where it was like, now we're, you know, we, we reach the novel phase novel. We're trying zoom. We're hanging out. We're doing meetups. We're making fun characters on Instagram, posting funny videos. And now we're just like, can we just be, can this just be done? Can we, ha- can we please like, yeah. no, it and can't the obviously no. because we were bad and, um, it's, and the virus is here to stay for a while until there's a vaccine yeah. or whatever. And so, you know, it just sucked the life out of me, I think, at some point. Um, and I just just didn't have the energy for poor Jean Ann anymore. <laughs> Sorry. I think that that is true of all of us in some capacity or another. You know, maybe one day she'll come back. But yeah. uh, thank you for remembering her. <laughs> she was nice. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, here's a question about uh, some uh, backyard friends. I recently moved to a more rural town, and in my backyard, I regularly see rabbits, squirrels, and birds. What are some best practices for setting up a bird feeder or otherwise to make as many animal friends as possible? Oh, great. <laughs> That's so great cute. Great question. And they also posted a very cute picture of a squirrel saying this is one of those friends. Um, oh. Huge squirrel fan over here, so like yeah. A+. Plus. I think my, like, you know, get yourself a couple of different kinds of feeders. That's my, like, just, you know, really just like throw, cast a wide net. Yes. Um, Why not? You could have a pretty bird feeder. There's squirrel feeders. This is something I do sometimes. I'll put out um, extra, 
I am a squirrel. Okay, full disclosure. So I eat a lot of nuts and like. I'll put yeah. my extra ones out in the yard and the squirrels love them. My yard has lots of squirrels. And um, one time I made this mistake. Don't make this mistake. I had a screen porch and I had some old peanuts and I put them like I was eating them on the porch. And so I put them on a table. <laughs> you already know what's going to happen. Uh-huh, Near the screen uh-huh, window. But keep going. The next morning, squirrels had broken in. They had eaten through the screens on my screen porch and stolen all of the nuts and left giant holes in my window screen. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, oh, but it was very funny. I it. couldn't even be mad. I was so I was so proud at how industrious they were to to bite through the screens to get the nuts. Um, so like, I'll put old nuts or whatever out on my lawn, and the squirrels love them. Old nuts. <laughs> Maria's tips for old nuts here on Good Luck High Five this week. Um, there is a there is a fabulous video of somebody did of a squirrel obstacle course that he built in his yard to like get to this pile of walnuts or something. And they had to go through all of these different obstacles to get there. It was the best video I've seen during quarantine. It was so funny. But eventually, by the end, the squirrels had figured out that they don't have to do the course at all. And they can, in fact, just climb up on this garage and jump like 20 feet to get to the reward. <laughs> Great. I mean, which is its own method. It of, is. Of, you know, I think like. <laughs> but of beating question. the obstacle course, like technically they solved it. They did solve it. It was it was very entertaining. One of the obstacles, he made a little cutout like you'd see at a state fair or something where you put your head through and he put some peanut butter on the other side so the squirrel would stick its little head through. <laughs> anyway, if you've seen the video, right. you know what I'm talking about. It's A+. Plus. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Heather asks, what is your favorite card art? Ooh. Great question. Um, I mean, look... Probably it's probably by Seb McKinnon. Oh yeah, nonstop bangers. Nonstop bangers. Like I, I love me the the alternate art for Order of Midnight. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. What's what's uh, the one I'm thinking of? Blood, where people's heads are like blood. It's not blood it's money, coming, but <laughs> bankrupt in blood. Bankrupt in blood. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one's it. Let me look it up. Yeah. Oh. Man, it, there's just so many good ones. <laughs> oh, so great. Yeah, Vengeful Rebirth, blood. also incredible. Gorgeous. Um, so, uh, so many good ones. Yeah, I, I, uh, I super love it. Um, Seb's got to, got to be my choice, and I'm gonna say Bankrupt and Blood. Final answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lodfish asks, I'm in for a fun mask, but do you also find masks with mouths on them creepy or are they in fact the creepiest? <laughs> oh, a uh, great question. The creepiest is yes, the answer. The creepiest, the absolute creepiest. The um, creepiest. N- yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> I saw somebody uh, had posted a picture of a one that they took a picture of their face and they uploaded it, got a custom mask where the bottom half was the picture of their actual face. And it was the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, no, nope, not about it. It didn't not work. Not about Spoiler it. alert, it did not work at all. Oh, just while, going back to art for a second, though, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Rebecca Gay. Oh, like, gosh, how could I forget about Rebecca Gay? Like, also incredible. Like, also yeah. an incredible amount of, like, uh, incredible, beautiful art. Absolutely. Like, I think especially her lands, oh, they're so good. Uh, so much of her <sighs> stuff is so good. Okay, so also... Also yeah. a big fan. Rebecca Gay. A plus. Of her stuff. Oh, man. This is reminding me that um, I need to buy an, a magic art. Oh, yeah. I'm the, the magic art I have in my house right now is from the un, latest Unset, which yeah. is the piece that is all of the various contraptions in one piece of art. Mm-hmm. We had that in our office, too. Didn't get hurt, everybody. It's fine. Yes, it um, is fine. Thank goodness. It's so good. I love that piece, too. Yeah. It's so good. Um, yeah. I I had one, which you got for me several years ago. A oh, long time ago. Yeah. Seven years ago. That unfortunately time. cannot hang in my house anymore. <sighs> yeah. 
Bummer. Yeah. Big time bummer. Bummer, but okay. You know, we're just going to get some other great art. Uh, this question comes from Michael uh, on Facebook. Maria, how do you find the time doing all the things you do and also serving as the governor of Michigan? <laughs> Do you look like the governor of Michigan? Yes. Have you not seen this, Megan? No. Okay. Google oh, her right I'm now. Googling her right now. <laughs> Somebody else on YouTube called me out for this, and I was like, oh, do I look like her? I looked it up, and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is me. It is me. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Isn't it horrifying? I don't. To answer your question, you know, I don't have any kids. No. <laughs> That's yep. how. Nope. And wow. Michigan, you just got to run. You know, it's an important job. I've got to run Michigan. Yeah. And um, I also got to do this podcast. Important job. So you just make yep. the time. You know, you just make the time. Yeah, you just have to make the time. <laughs> Megan, do you have a famous wow. doppelganger? Um, I don't think so. There's just like that one... Um, the one woman from, um, oh, Death Comes to Pemberley. From Death Comes to Pemberley. Yeah. I'm going to look her up her name right now because I need um, to know this. Which she does look enough like me that it was like uncanny to watch that show. Oh, was it really? It was just kind of like weird. Yeah. It's like kind of weird to watch someone who has like such a similar face to yours. Be and you're like, Anna Maxwell Martin. Yeah. That's who it is. Yeah. Um, it's uh, even now there <laughs> are some, at there are some photos of her that are just like the right angle that it looks a lot like me. And it's really weird. <laughs> Great. Like we have kind of the same, like, especially like the same eye shape. And I think that that's, it's very strange anyways. Oh, it's I've, just weird to look at anyways. Oh, we've got some questions from Instagram here. Oh yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> Oh, how did you become so amazing? Great question. It's natural. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's a constant process, man. Vacation to the beach or the mountains from Amy? <gasps> mountains for me. Mountains for sure. Great I question. I love the mountains. Though. I love hiking in the mountains. I have a, this is, this is a relevant time to talk about my new tattoo. Oh yeah. Megan, show off your new tattoo. I can briefly show, I can, let me, let me try and get it on screen here. It's so great. Look at it. It's, it's like so. <laughs> like, how do I how do I get this on there? Hold on. There we go. There it is. You can see it is the mountains. It's so pretty. Um, I love it a lot. What mountains are they? Um, it is Mount Princeton in uh, in like south uh, western Colorado. Great. Which is part of the Collegiate Peaks. Because <laughs> there's like a, a brown and a yellow. There, it, so it's like, it's there's not a brown, but there is like, there's uh, Princeton, Columbia, Harvard. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. I didn't know about that. Um, another fun mountain fact, the Grand Tetons um, is a French uh, named mountain range, which means uh -huh. exactly what you would think. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it's that great. the other day. That's great. Um, uh, Amy had let's some... See. Oh, sorry. You go go ahead. Yeah. But Amy's got other questions here. We can get to. Oh, OK. Guys. Matthew asks, what are your ideal jumpstart pack pairings? Wow. Great. Question. We were talking about this earlier. For me, I, I feel like. It, oh. I'm going to look up jumpstart stuff. I feel like for me, it's still like wall is just the funniest thing to pair anything with. Oh, no. For me, it's unicorn pirates. Unicorn pirates is great. Unicorn pirates. Please. Like, that's just what I want. I love walls. I make the joke every time. Um, yeah. Like, wall is such a good one to pair things with. Like, wizard okay. walls. Wizard walls, great. I don't care what, anything with a wall. I think it's yeah, very exactly. funny. Yeah, um, exactly. But um, I think for me, it's going to be unicorn pirates. Ooh, enchanted dogs. That's one you could have. Yes. Like, can you imagine just, like, like a pirate ship in a movie they're like a pirate ship approaches and then you look on deck and it's just it's just unicorns <laughs> wall doctors with like is eye one. patches or and like peg legs oh i think it'd be so funny because doctor is a life gain deck so you could have dr wall <laughs> Ooh, dr rainbow multi dr cards. rainbow <laughs> there is mine dr rainbow right. that's what i want <laughs> yes Yes. Yes. 
Okay. Um, question again from Amy. Um, what is one thing magic has taught you about yourself? <gasps> Great Ooh. question. Hmm. That I don't always have the patience to think things through. <laughs> <laughs> I never have that. <laughs> like, I, I think I am m- more impulsive than I thought I was. I think for me, something I learned, and this is going to tournaments a lot and stuff, is to trust yourself, you know? Oh, yeah, like trust your gut for sure. Yes. Like you are better than you think you are, I think Mm -hmm. is a great one. Because a lot of times, especially like for players, you know, like me, I I would go to a tournament and be very intimidated. Surely all these people have been playing longer than me. Surely all these people are better at the game than me. They're smarter than me. They make the decisions correctly. They're better at math, whatever. Um, but what I found is that that simply usually is not true. You know, um, you are great at magic. You are better at player than you think you're and give yourself credit for, you know, like you can make really smart, intelligent choices, even if all growing up, you're like, I suck at math, which is something that I always thought about myself. Um, but magic is a math game. Yes, but it's more than that. There's a lot more decisions that go into it simply than, you know, adding and subtracting or whatever. And Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would have said that about myself before I started playing Magic. Yeah, that's great. So there you go, everybody. Um, MTG Wayman asks, do you miss traveling to GPs or PTs? (laughs) This uh, this was the food question. (laughs) The food question? Yeah, we were talking about missing Magic food earlier. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, yes and no. Um, I don't miss like missing my cat (laughs) yeah or like missing out on doing things at home but nothing's going on at home right now and i do miss seeing all of our friends yeah i miss that a lot the camaraderie people out there yeah it's huge right yeah um traveling is exciting like we got to go to places that we never would have gone you know i never would have gone normally like we got to go to barcelona that's amazing we got to go to canada a bunch of times in victoria which is beautiful we um, got to go to Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, we got to go some really great places. We got to go and to I do miss that. London, you know, like yeah. this is absolutely wonderful. Traveling, however, a lot of people don't, you know, think about this is is really hard on your body. Um, yes. It is. Yes. Especially for like as you get older, and older, it is harder and harder and harder to travel a lot. Like I get sick pretty easily and like I would get destroyed after coming home from most tournaments um for Mm -hmm. days i'd just be like i'm just on the couch feeling terrible um so that was really tough um and being away from home like you mentioned and missing our cats and everything is really hard but there is all those positives with it so like overall the answer for me is yes i do miss all that stuff but um having time to recover essentially (laughs) during a pandemic which is something very strange um is valuable too i think Um, yeah i agree yeah, so yes and no. And miss, yeah. missing the food because we got... There's lots of things I would have never eaten yep. that I eat now because of magic, <laughs> which is weird, but that is very that true. That is weird, but do you know what? There are some like there are some real foodies in magic. Yeah. Amy has another great question about your favorite moment in your magic journey. Hmm. You know, um, something I'll point to is when we started doing the arena tournaments and we went to the first one that we worked and it was really exciting for me because I, it was a moment when I was like, this is kind of it for magic. Like this show is incredible. Like I come from a background of being a television producer. So when we did that show, I was finally like, yes, (laughs) this is like, we've done it. We've made an awesome show, right? Uh, yeah. we've got all of these really cool elements in here to make this show like super entertaining and fun to watch and well presented and all of these things. That was really exciting for me to be a part of and be like, Hey, we have made an excellent piece of entertainment for people, um, yeah. to showcase this great game in a way that hasn't been able to happen until this point. So that was, I'll put that in there. I'll throw that into the ring for sure. Um, I think mine is yet to come. Which is nebulous. What and about when mysterious, you made it to that one final? Wait, what? 
I said and mine is nebulous and mysterious and is yet to come. Are you but saying you'll like, find out about it later? Oh, <laughs> I was thought you were just being like it hasn't happened yet. But I, now I know what you what you mean. <laughs> so I'll tell you all about it in the future. Oh yeah, I'm very excited for this too. <laughs> um, let's see. We have a bunch more on Twitter. Ooh, okay, great. So I'm gonna run through some of these. Uh, Mirapunk asks, "How's Ghost Host doing? Do ghosts have cool ghostly masks to wear?" The answer is yes. Every ghost wears a mask because they are very respectful um, and very mm-hmm. conscientious. Like they understand they're dead. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They understand they're dead. Um, but Ghost Host also misses like more crowded places to you know hang out because right now um ghost host has to haunt individual people's homes yeah um which isn't their jam they're very much a public ghost (laughs) they like being out in public haunting lots of people at once so they're a little bummed out that it's like a one at a time haunting right now yeah yeah poor ghost host hopefully they get back to their normal haunt schedule as soon as possible yes um megan not megan which is not me different megan (laughs) um asks best ways to pass the time when there isn't anything to do and you're trying not to sleep the day away quarantine is rough oh yeah it, it is it is it is uh, so rough i finally got back into reading and i've been reading a bunch great um i also play you know like sometimes i'll play arena i've also been playing i play through the breach on steam which is one of my favorite games it's very very good um Games are you know, big. I sit outside. Walks, state parks. I, yeah, I go on walks. I, I certainly walk and I hike. And um, the thing is, I think with all of these things, it's good to mention that there you have to like make yourself do it more than normal. Yeah. And you're probably not going to want to do it before you do it. No. And also, it's okay to be sleeping more than normal. Yeah. We're in a pandemic. There's like so, so many okay. different yeah. panic, fear keeping yourself safe responses that your body is going through on a subconscious level that you're not responsible for. Um, but a lot of times don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. I understand. Like if you want to, if you want to be doing more, that's great. As long as it's not you being hard on yourself about not doing more. Like I'll be sitting here and think to myself, I don't want to do anything. I'm in a bad mood because of all this. And then Mm -hmm. I'll just like make myself go outside and go on a walk. And then I'm happy that I did that, you know, but it takes that extra effort because of the situation that we're in so if you need that little push to push yourself like be like okay i'm i'm accepting that i have to go one more hurdle because of this weird world we're living in that's okay um yeah you'll feel better on the other side hopefully um paper mario comes out on the 17th everybody so (laughs) there you go there you go uh Uh, Gibson Cat asks, which famous historical figure would you want sharing the booth with you as you cast a GP? <laughs> wow, great question. Um, Captain Catherine Janeway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> historical figure, Captain Catherine Janeway. You know, she's from the future, which is its own kind of history. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Ooh, I'm going to go with... Uh, Queen Elizabeth. Ooh, great one. I just watched a show about C- Queen Elizabeth the other day. Yeah, she's, you know, she's endlessly fascinating. Super fascinating figure. Yeah. Um, um, I think would be pretty ruthless. Oh, she definitely would. She would be super ruthless, but I, you know what? Okay. Like, let's do it. The show I was watching, if you're interested, everybody, in watching something really fun and historical is one of my favorite presenters, Lucy Worsley, um, who does shows on PBS. And uh, <laughs> this most recent one she did is about royal secrets and intrigue. And Ooh. so she did one. It was about Queen Elizabeth and specifically the Spanish Armada defeat, which was uh-huh. really interesting. She goes into depth on that. She also has an episode on Queen Anne, which mm-hmm. I became very interested in after seeing the favorite um with yeah. Megan, which was an excellent film. And um, Marie Antoinette. Ooh. It's a little three-episode series. Yeah. And speaking of the favorite, um, yeah. from some of the same creators, we've been watching The Great on Hulu. Oh, yeah. 
which is fantastic. It's great. <laughs> uh, it is so, so good. Also recommend. Yes. Highly recommend. And if yeah. you're into history or whatever, Lucy is like personal life hero. Like I wish I could be her. She does such great series where she dresses up in um, period appropriate costumes and tells yes. history in such a fun and really interesting way. I love her. So um, check those out if you've never seen her series before. She's got a bunch of them. Um, yeah. But my, I think my final answer is going to be Shakespeare, who is my oh. favorite historical figure. And um, he would just say some really, you know, artistic things in the booth probably. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have one more um, Instagram question, real quick. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Which is, what did you do before starting magic for work and or hobby? Well, our hobbies are the same. Um, which yeah. is like improv, and that's like number one. Um, for work, I like I mentioned, I was a television producer. Yeah. Um, let's see. I worked in publishing for a couple of years. Um, yeah, and. Yeah, that was just kind of that was kind of it. <laughs> I was a teacher for two years. Actually, oh, that's yeah. relevant. You're a I teacher. guess. Yeah, I sometimes forget um, about that. Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Um. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um. Yeah, an improv, like you said, and I also yeah. write a bunch, obviously. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Matt asks, how did you two meet? Uh, improv. Via improv. <laughs> via improv. And then also we quickly discovered that we also had gaming in common. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Sergio asks, what if I don't have a question? That's fine. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Thanks for writing um, me Michael anyway. asks, did you mail out the pa- pins? Oh. The answer is no. I Great swear question. to I swear to goodness that we will. Hopefully when we <sighs> nail down this new office that we're moving into yeah. because yeah. the old one flooded we Um, had like we would have hoped to be mailing them out by now already or have mailed them out yes but that was undone when our office flooded the good news is that the pins survived the pins survived intact they're fine yes we are so close Um, everybody we're so close to mailing out so many things yeah Um, we have lots of things to mail out as soon as we have an office space there will be so many things mailed yes Um, and and we're very sorry about the delay but also but also our office flooded, and there is a global pandemic. <laughs> so we're Don't just worry. trying, you all. We're just trying so hard. We and like we we're are failing close. a lot of the time. We are so close okay. on having somewhere. I promise. It's just like there's always a setback. My God, oh, there's always there a setback. Really it's always something. Yeah. Oh, this one's one of my favorites. I told Marie that we were going to ask this. We were going to answer this one because I wanted to. Oh, okay. Um, someone asks. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Do you see any future in a mediocre podcast that is surviving solely because of the podcast host's affiliation to Watsi? <laughs> and I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for calling us mediocre. Uh, most people, when they go to insult us, call us downright bad, atrocious, cringe. One of my favorites. Oh yeah, cringe. For um sure. yeah. So like <laughs> mediocre. Wow. Really I'm, handing out the compliments here. I love it. Mediocre. Thank you for yes. that. By the way. Also, it's hysterical because we feel like, generally speaking, we suffer because of our relationship with wizards. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. Um, there are certainly a lot of people who I think trust us less um, because we work for Wizards of the Coast um, in contractor capacities, even yeah. though... Like, very occasionally, we also might add. <laughs> like, exactly. One, very occasionally. <laughs> and uh, two, like, we hope that when there's valid criticism to offer that we are still offering it. Yes. I think sometimes people mistake our positivity for, like... Endorsement? Endorsement? Yeah, but the fact is that we're just positive people and we are a show that's about enjoying the game. Yeah, yeah. Like, And, like, if you want to have a show that's not about enjoying the game, there are so many podcasts <laughs> out there for you. There, is so there are many so for many. You. But and, like, we're success- still mostly... Like, we're doing this podcast because we like playing magic and we like talking about magic. And, like, so, like, we're not going to be grumpy about it. And I'm sorry. Like, you know, like, that's, you know, one of our tips to success in podcasting is to find a niche that's underserved Mm -hmm. and to fill that. And that is, And in magic, it's positive. In magic, that's positivity somehow. Oh, it's true, though. (laughs) It's true. Um, Okay, two more. Great troll question. Thumbs up. Uh, let's see. 
<laughs> Great. Um, Mark asks, what's one thing each of you have become fond of since COVID that you weren't necessarily fond of before? Food, oh. show, movie, book, music, just something that has interested you more now than before. Great question. I've got an answer. So yeah, go for it. Um, I was, of course, a fan of this person before this because who on earth literally isn't? But I have since, since like gone on a deep dive into their career. And the answer is Jackie Chan. I've been <laughs> watching a lot of Jackie Chan movies and also wow. Kung Fu movies in general. Maria, I did not see this answer coming. I know. And to be honest with you, neither would I have before COVID, which is why this is a great answer to this question and a great it's question. It's a great answer. Yes, I recently have found a new love for Jackie Chan and for Kung Fu movies, um, specifically out of Hong Kong, and um, <laughs> they're just so good. I mean, watching the choreography is absolutely mind-blowing in I these movies. I love a good fight choreography. Yes. Like, like few other things. I oh. mean, I... And for me, I'll be I'll be fair. For me, it's a lot of like I do slightly prefer so, like a really good sword choreographed fight? sword fight. Mm -hmm. Like a lot I of watched, these have that. By oh, the way, fair enough. I will have to check it out. I am. I'm gonna get get you some recommendations. Obviously, yeah. the, the one people think about all the time is Legend of the Drunken Master Two, which is not available for streaming anywhere <laughs> right now. But I did watch number one. Which is yeah. Just like, Wow. <laughs> um, oh, but he, does, a, he yeah. does all his own stunts. Okay. So he never uses a stunt double. And the things he does, you're just like, you are out of your mind. <laughs> he is. Yeah. There is no doubt. He is absolutely 100% should never do <laughs> many of the things that he does, but he does them <laughs> anyway. And that alone is like watching it is for that value of just like the, the absolute nerve of this human being to do these things is completely bonkers. And he, Great. and I've watched like, I think five movies now. And like every time I'm just sitting there <laughs> shocked yes. and awed at the artistry of these fight sequences and also of the complete brazenness of someone to do some of these things. Like he slides down an electric pole covered in lights that was not properly grounded or secured and he thought he was going to die when he did it but he was shooting two movies he was directing one at night doing one in the day and he was like i don't even care anymore <laughs> he just did it ah. and he like ended up with like severe burns anyway you can all look it up but that's, that's my nuts. personal one yeah that's like this is not a, this is just talking about fight choreography i watched like back when everyone was talking about it i watched like three episodes of the witcher Oh, because, yeah. So I watched the first one because everyone was talking about it. And I was like, I should know what's going on. And at the end of the first episode, there is like an excellently uh, choreographed like, Great. sword fight scene. Um, and it is it is so good. And I watched it and I was like, if this is what I can expect from this show, like I am so in like I love like I said, I love a yeah. good choreographed sword fight. And then I watched two more episodes and there were not enough sword fights. <laughs> so I quit it. I was like, I was sold a false bill of goods. I really thought that I would get to see some more excellent fight choreography in this. And it is not here. And I am not about it. <laughs> Well, if you have any suggestions for us for fight yeah. choreography, you can let us know at GLHF Magic on Twitter because obviously we are both into this. Yes, into it. Um, my answer to this question is way less cool and classy. Um, I used to <laughs> never watch, ne literally never watch reality TV. Oh, yeah. And I have now watched a buttload of <laughs> dumb dating shows. And like, not on my own, to be fair. Like, it's kind of yeah. something that one of our, like, one of our social circles does. And I have like I have an appreciation now for that as a group activity. Like I will still never watch one on my own. Yeah. But I used to be the kind of person who would never watch it at all. And I really enjoy it. I as mean, like hanging out with our friends and just being like, what is happening in this? Guess what? I found that Marshall and I are both into completely randomly answer married at first sight. <laughs> uh, do you know what? That makes a lot of sense. I can see Marshall being weirdly into married <laughs> yep. at first sight. Yeah. It's Honestly, just Marshall should go on that show. That feels right for him. <laughs> okay, I'll text him after this and be Please. like, "We let him know that that's my personal out. opinion." 
<laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one more from Twitter. Okay, okay. Um, this is I love you, Mana. From I love you, Mana. You have to choose one planeswalker to make you a plate at a continental breakfast buffet. They have hot scrambled eggs and things, but nothing fancy. You do not get to give them any info beforehand. Who do you choose and why? <laughs> um, what a question. Yeah. Gosh. I feel like Garrick would probably make me something that I would want to eat. Yeah, you and Garrick have similar balance. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, He'd probably just give me a plate of bacon and I would be very happy with exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I feel like that would work out for you. Mm-hmm. I feel like for me, it would be like, I think Jaya. <laughs> right. She just seems like she would be like. She kind of, she's like older, so she has like a kind of seasoned approach, but she also is like a little bit of a wild card still. Mm-hmm. So she's I feel like I would those. end up with what I truly want at a continental <laughs> breakfast, which is like a bowl of a random cereal plus a waffle. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Eggs Benedict. No, I want like, I want like a waffle and a bowl of random cereal. And I feel like that's what, like, she seems like someone who I would maybe have a decent chance of ending up with that. <laughs> I feel like that's what Domri Raid would give you. Oh, that's okay. No, I feel like Domri would be like, Domri is going to give you like, he's going to like get eggs, but then he's going to put like syrup on top of the eggs. Oh yeah. And then he's going to put syrup on top of the, like cereal on top of the syrup on top of the eggs. That's definitely what he's going to do. Now I'm hungry again. Okay. Do you know what? Maybe I changed my, my, I think actually who we're trying to land on for me is Ral Zarek. I feel like Ral Zarek would actually probably give me what I'm looking for. (laughs) When it comes to breakfast. Yeah. yeah Not in anything good, else in good. life. <laughs> well, everybody. Oh, everybody. It's Molly. Th- Hi, Molly. Thank you so much for your questions on this week's mailbag. They have been <laughs> fabulous. Um, we'll continue to do mailbag episodes in the future, no doubt, because we have yeah. such a blast doing them. Thank you for hanging out with us. Yeah. While we talk. So enjoyable. Magic and not magic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone, that's this week's episode of Good Luck High Five. Thank you for your questions, as we said again, and for hanging out with us. We're proud of you, no matter what you're doing out there in your life or not doing, as we said again. Exactly. It's okay, whatever you're doing or whatever you're not doing. And be sure to join us. Doing or not doing it. Yes. Um, Be sure to join us next week when we talk about historic, um, which we're both super enjoying now, fresh off of some bands and some. Yeah, uh, see what happens. See what happens. Uh, I wrote. I'm keeping a running list of decks that I'm playing against in historic, just so I don't miss anything. Yeah. And right now the list is already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen decks deep. So you know it's a super cool format. And after these bands, we're going to get some new fresh stuff in there to talk about, mm-hmm. no doubt, and get prepped for the Arena Open Tournament that's historic coming up that weekend. Um, but yeah, thank you again yeah. to everyone who supports over on patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. You're all the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, and the cucumber's hat. Um, yeah, classic <laughs> cucumber's hat. <laughs> And if you want to become a new friend, we would so, so love it uh, before next episode. It's super easy, takes no time, and it really helps us out. Um, And uh, thanks to Card Kingdom, too, for being an amazing sponsor, as they always are. And Mm -hmm. thanks to you for tuning in every week and hanging out with us. Um, Somebody tweeted us a picture of them doing the dishes from an episode where we were like, well, you're sitting there doing your dishes. And they're like, I was literally doing my dishes when you said do your dishes. Yes. And I was like, yes. I love it. Actually, I hate thing. doing dishes, but I love that we are helping you do dishes. Is that your least favorite chore? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> By so far. Even By more than litter box? Yes. Whoa. Because the litter box, like you do it once a day and it and like takes not. like a, you know, it takes like a hot second and that's it. And then you like wash your hands and you're done. Dishes take forever you do the dishes and they're not even all done there's still more dishes there's (laughs) There's just always always, there's always dishes to be done and they always take a long time oh i hate them yeah it's like the post office the mail never stops exactly and (laughs) just like the post office (laughs) we never stop (laughs) we're the mail we never stop like the mail 
we've got 10 more episodes and then um it's our 400th episode can you believe that yeah no i honestly cannot that is so unbelievable (laughs) well thanks for sticking with us everybody yeah we'll be here for 400 coming up in 10 you don't you're not gonna want to miss it that's all we we really hope so (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean with the state of the world who knows we won't try hope to be here in 10 (laughs) god (laughs) <laughs> can i t- so on my like anecdote as we leave um yeah. on my on i was like on twitter for these questions and like on the side it has like the trending but the promoted one at the top is like want to get away and it's for southwest airlines and i was just like what <laughs> what we can't we can't we can't. Do you want to know one that's near mine? It's similar. It says American Airlines is reviewing the details after Ted Cruz photographed on a flight without wearing a mandatory mask. Yeah. Seems about right. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. <laughs>